Welcome to Made Live here on TV3. My name is Park Yasari. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. 47-year-old employee of Ronell Filling Station at New Dawenya killed in an explosion. Also, seeming diplomatic row as Nigerian High Commission in Ghana accuses Ghanaian media of bias reportage. And also on the international front, U.S. military to send additional 1,000 troops to Middle East as tensions build with Iran. We've got the very latest details of all these stories, plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with the views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Visit any of our social media pages on Facebook and on Twitter. Our handle is TV3GH. Now, the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, Olufemi Michael Abikoye, has expressed strong reservations about media reports on Nigerians engaged in crimes in Ghana. The High Commissioner, in a press statement, said the trend is unfair. There's more in this Newsdex report. The Nigerian... Caution. We, are, we are all victims of what has been happening in South Africa, for example, with the xenophobic attacks. West Africans have been at the receiving end, especially Ghanaians and Nigerians. So we have lived it. We know when these things get out of hands, what it means and what it does to us. So we should not engage in any tendency or any provocation that will lead to an escalation and then we suffer. So let us take this holding statement for now, which is a statement of caution to edge calm. And when we meet the High Commissioner very soon, uh, we will let you know uh, what the outcome of the meeting is. But everybody should calm down. Uh, let, let us beat our plowshares and let us calm down. Let us not engage in conduct and rhetoric, which will escalate matters or inflame passions. We don't need that at briefly, this time. Briefly, what could be the ripple effect of that, uh, so to speak, undiplomatic statement that was issued by the High Commissioner? We need to call it as it's... Uh, you, you, you still want us to pass judgment on the statement issued by the High Commissioner. We do not want to do that for now. In this era of social media creations and all of that, we are yet to even ascertain if he indeed signed that statement. So let him come and appear before the committee as the chairman has, has, has indicated and then we will ask the relevant questions. We'll find out if he indeed altered that statement and all of that and then we shall move matters forward. At this point, we are only urging calm and circumspection mm -hmm. and we want to proceed with a lot of caution. We don't want to prejudge matters, engage in prejudicial statements that will inflame passions. We don't want to do that at this point. Chairman, there, there's a video making. So that, that the Foreign Affairs uh, co uh, Committee of Parliament is a joint press conference that they've both done. The indication is that they are going to meet the Nigerian High Commissioner and uh, confirm that uh, so to speak, a uh, statement that uh, has been allegedly issued by the High Commissioner and signed by him, though, and then they take it from there. But the indication is that Ghanaians and Nigerians, as such, would have to remain calm, and as much as uh, the security agencies deal with the criminal aspects of what is going on. This is what the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament has been looking at. Kamala Kucha, TV3 News, Parliament Accra. All right, Kamala Kucha reporting live from the House of Parliament. You just had the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs uh, reacting to a statement issued a while ago by the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana. And if you're wondering what may have instigated this uh, response by the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs, I'll tell you why. Uh, the Nigerian High Commissioner to Ghana, Olufemi Michael Abikoye, has expressed strong reservations about media reports on Nigerians engaged in crimes in Ghana. Well, the High Commissioner in a press statement said the trend is unfair. There's more in this news desk report. Statement says the Ghanaian press, both print and electronic, as well as social media, seem to enjoy demonizing Nigeria, a country he describes as Ghana's fraternal brother. He makes reference to a number of headlines which seem to paint Nigerians as criminals. 
Ambassador Olufemi Michael Abikoye says the situation has caused pain and apprehension to the many law-abiding Nigerians in Ghana. He states that these persons include astute businessmen, bankers, insurance brokers, and students who travel to the country on a daily basis. The statement from the High Commission, however, points out that it does not condone any form of criminality, whether from Ghanaians or Nigerians. It urges the security agencies to crack the whip on all lawbreakers. Making reference to the recent kidnapping of two Canadian girls in the Ashanti region, the High Commissioner wondered why the focus was on Nigerians perpetuating the crime when the Ghanaian suspects outnumbered them. Touching on the implications of this development, the statement says if not halted, the trend could jeopardize Ghana's relationship with Nigeria. The statement concludes with an assurance that the High Commission will continue to take the necessary steps to ensure its nationals obey Ghana's laws. All right, so lots of news, uh, dash reports uh, on the uh, press statement issued by the Nigerian High Commissioner uh, a while ago. Now, international relations expert Dr. Vladimir Entredanso has also been uh, commenting on Nigerians involved in uh, crimes uh, reported in Ghana. Uh, let's take a listen. It's Nigeria you are talking. I mean, you can mention it because some people have been arrested who have become billionaires out of kidnapping. Why? Because they kidnap ransom money and quite recently, some of them have been arrested. That was the time Ghana should have started preparing about kidnapping. Is the, that possibility of getting influences from that area is normal. And I believe it is, it, is, it is from there, maybe. Not that persons from there are coming to kidnap our people, but maybe our people are also learning. Oh. The point is, is it not possible that there are certain instances in Ghana that are lending themselves to this? I'm looking at it from the angle of instability in Ghana, generally, because of politics. There is so much indiscipline in the country. There is so much absence of the rule of law in the country. So that when people are doing bad things, we don't want to take it up as a bad thing. Even when the security agencies want to come on it, we debar the security agencies from acting. We beat them. We insult them. In other news, the University of Ghana president of the Teachers Association of Ghana, Dr. Hari Agbanu, says that Nigerian professor Augustin Nwabra goofed in his statement made in a video claiming that Ghanaian universities are of less quality as compared to Nigerian universities. He made the statement speaking to TV3 News team at the University of Ghana Legon campus in Accra. That professor uh, was a frustrated person. Uh, oh, oh. Of course, when you have you are in a country where uh, your compatriots are misbehaving and giving your country a bad name, you have every reason to be concerned. So I see him as a concerned person who was not happy the kind of publicity being given the Ghanaian, uh, the Nigerian community, and trying hard to see if there could be a way. Does he think that? Niger the Nigerian populace, the students who come here, are so stupid to leave their country where they can pay less for quality and come to Ghana to pay more for lower quality? No, they are not stupid. They know what they are looking for. They, they love the environment. They love the consist uh, consistency. They love the peace in this country where... Uh, academic year begins and you are sure that you finish, you start your school, you are sure that within the four, three years you, you finish. But in Nigeria you can be in one university for 10 years because of uh, the troubles. And so you cannot, under any circumstance, think that universities that don't know when they will reopen and when, don't know when they will end the academic year are better than those that know and plan for their students. In terms of the fees, they are international students. Anywhere you go as an international student, you pay international students' fees. Ghanaians are in Nigeria. If you are there as an international student, you pay international students' fee. 
you go to Britain, you, everywhere you go, you pay international student fee. And so if Nigerians, because of the situation in their country, it's not making it possible for them to have uh, university education and have it the way they want to have it, I have to struggle to pay so much to come here. That, for me, is an indication that the quality here is better than the quality back home in Nigeria. Well, so uh, Mr. Harry Agbano is reacting to comments by a Nigerian professor at the University of Ghana, Augustine and Wambara, who is inciting the Nigerian media and community in Ghana to strategize and destroy Ghana's image uh, in a video which has gone viral on social media. While well, the professor, in a meetup with some Nigerians, implored them to tear up Ghana in the eyes of the international community through negative reportage. Uh, so we're going to stay a while longer on the subject. It's one of our top stories uh, for the day. I'm going to go live now on Skype uh, to speak to a security analyst. Um, uh, he's just joined me live on Skype. Well, the Nigerian professor did not just end there. He also alleged that the Ghana police service has been deeply infiltrated by Nigerians. How true is this? Adams Bona is a security analyst and joins us via Skype. Adams, thank you very much for your time. So we're being told that Nigerians have infiltrated our police service. That must be quite devastating. Yes, good evening to your viewers. Yes, very devastating. Uh, I hope we would get the police to probably respond, uh, either through a press release or make a statement on that. I'm sure the IGP can do that or his uh, PRO's Director General of Public uh, Affairs, uh, David Eklu, ACP, uh, because then uh, citizenship is by law. Citizenship is not by somebody's creed or somebody's accent or somebody's color, race. Citizenship is defined by a certain law. And the laws in this country uh, says if you have to be a citizen of Ghana at a certain, to have a, you know, attain a certain age, certain qualification to enter into the various security services, including the Ghana police service, including the Ghana police service. And so for him to have made that statement, uh, we all know that, uh, I mean, the general public is not generally too happy sometimes when issues uh, that relate to foreigners are reported to the police station. They think that sometimes when issues relating to foreigners are reported to the police station, they, the next day they are seeing they are these same people, suspects are seen walking on the streets. And so when this video went viral, I had people calling me, asking me, is it true that we have... Uh, people of Nigerian origin, nationality, in the Ghana police service. I said I cannot confirm uh, because I I don't work within the... I'm not a, a staff of the Ghana police service. I'm not within their HR department. And so if they are there, it is only the police who can confirm or deny. But the police can uh, probably uh, invite the, the, the you know, suspect, I mean, sorry, the professor, and interrogate him. Maybe he has evidence to prove that there are people who have Nigerian passports who are within the Ghana police service. I mean, we our relationship with Nigeria dates back many decades. And so uh, there are people whose parents, who grand, great grandfathers came here, have naturalized and given birth here, and therefore they might have nothing to do with Nigeria. They would be they will be Ghanaians uh, with by you know law, and so. You just can't say the, the are Nigerians in the Ghana police service in the manner he said it. And for me, it's, it's something that needs to be investigated or else what we might see, if we are not careful, is that uh, just like the Mamobi suspect who was picked up and the, and the people nearly lynched him, that is barbaric. That is not the way to go. But when we have professors such as him saying this type of things, then people would rather... People will not have trust in the Ghana police service. They will think that the Ghana police service is uh, infiltrated by Nigerians. So when you arrest some foreigners and you take them there, the next day, they will let them go because they are, you know, uh, Nigerians. And so for me, this issue is sensitive, and I would hope that uh, what is going on in uh, the Kumasi area where Nigerians are getting beaten, let's not do that. 
uh, Nigerians have been here. Ninety-nine percent of them are doing well. Right. Let's not take the loss into our own hands. Right. Uh, Adam Bona, uh, kindly hold on for country. me, Mr. Bona. Uh, kindly hold on for me. Uh, for me, uh, you still watch Media Life here on TV3. Now, for the sake of those of you who have not heard that. Uh, voice clip of the Nigerian professor and exactly what he's had to say. Uh, we'll bring that insert to, to you right now and then we'll continue with that interview. So just take a listen to what he had to say. Around Africa, including South Africa, and they won't lack anything. But because of our country, we are not respected. Here, with all due respect, the two professors in our faculty are Nigerians. They're on sabbatical. They are likely to leave at the end of the year. They are already appealing, can you get us more Nigerians? We have these, but we are not respected because we do not take advantage of our, our what we have, our facilities. So this is where I come in. We are, we are highly skilled and highly talented and blessed people, but many a time we lack strategy. Nigerians tend to lack strategy. Um, you can have good skills. If you, if you don't know how to let people know it is, it's there. It dies. Like having a, a factory full of items in the warehouse. If you don't advertise it, it remains in the warehouse. Sir, they have harassed us a lot. I know that. I'm often on the road. One day I was, the day I was driving in, I had my workout things in the car. The Ghanaian police took my dumbbells and walked into his car and said, I have taken it. A colleague was with me. He said, what do we do? I said, if I do that, let me go and urinate first and come back. I urinated and come back and said, go and bring it from your car down to this car. And he did. But sir, I can tell you something. From his accent, I'm a professor of English. From his accent, he's a Ghanaian police. From his accent, I can bet my life he's a Nigerian. I can bet my life. He has, he's a Nigerian policeman. He's a Ghanaian policeman, but he is a Nigerian. His accent is obviously Nigerian. The key things you use to identify where somebody comes, all of them. And when we left, you know, that day my, somehow as I packed my things, I misplaced my papers when they were opening things. And they, they, they delayed me from Aflao to Winneba eight hours until somehow I got the paper. So what I'm saying is, we need strategy, sir. I will suggest something which the embassy can think about. I know they know which they can do immediately. And the Nigerian community, there is bad image for Nigeria. We can take it back through the press. We can reverse it. We have powerful Nigerian media stations, channels broadcast all over the world. Right, so you just heard the Nigerian professor there um, obviously complain about uh, treatments being meted out to Nigerians here in Ghana. Let me return to Skype. Uh, Adams Bona is a security analyst. He's still on the Skype with us. Uh, Mr. Bona, thank you for uh, staying with us uh, on this subject. Um, now, quite apart from the issue of Nigerians being unfairly targeted in Ghana, uh, the issues he raised about infiltration of the security services by Nigerians is absolutely um, unsustainable, in, 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 in my opinion. What do you think? Well, if, it will be difficult to say it cannot be substantiated without uh, asking him to prove that uh, he says he's a professor. Well, he's making the claims analysis. based on the accent of these people. He says they sound like Nigerians. Well, sounding like Nigerian, you have a Nigerian saying we have Nigerian police officers, Nigerians in the Ghana police service. Uh, maybe he needs to clarify that, because clarifying it would go a long way uh, to bring clarity to this whole uh, idea of the Nigerians uh, in the Ghana Police Service. You know, the Tadi, uh, you know, the guy who was who was arrested in Takradi broke jail, and media men who went there said uh, the way and manner he broke jail looked very suspicious. And so, for me, these are some of the things that you know, worsens the conspiracy theory. I would hope that uh, he's invited to come and clarify what he meant. But apart from that, Nigerians being targeted. I don't think Nigerians are being targeted. And, uh, you know, the fact that the names are being mentioned. If, if you go to the U.S., 
the, when you are a Mexican, they will say, uh, when, Mexi when people of Mexican origin commit crime, and most of these people, the Latinos, most of these people are uh, Americans. They are mentioned as, you know, Latino Americans or, you know, uh, Mexicans living in the U.S. And so how then do we define those of Nigerian origin who commit crime? Mine is that uh, uh, let's not begin to probably say uh, because of calling, saying this person is a Nigerian, a crime is no longer a crime. Let's look at the issue of the crimes being committed by a certain section of Nigeria. Once we are able to do that, I think the name calling will stop. And for the press release from the Nigerian embassy blaming the media, I think that I am a bit disappointed in the Nigerian High Commissioner. The simple reason is that I haven't heard anywhere where the Nigerian High Commissioner has called the media reporters and media houses into a room to let you know why Nigerians, are, what are they are doing here. If he hasn't done all this, how then does he then blame the media who are doing their work? Unfortunately, we have freedom of speech and people can, can talk. And therefore, for me, I think that the Nigerian High Commissioner should come again, rather meet the media, and rather do things that would enhance the image of Nigerians living in Ghana, not the... Right. Uh, very finally, Mr. Buna, uh, is this likely to spark any tensions between Ghana and Nigeria? It shouldn't be. I mean, I'm already... I picked up information. Some things have happened in Kumasi, and if Kumasi people are watching, a uh, session of Kumasi people are watching this media, they should... No one should be attacked. It is unlawful. It's barbaric to attack anyone because you suspect the person is a Nigerian. Not 99% of Nigerians are not criminals. They are doing their business. And so for tension, yes. I mean, but we live with Nigerians are our friends. They are our colleagues. We live with them. We are in schools with them. And so for me, I think that what is wrong should be wrong. Let's call Ghanaians to tone down and not, beat, not take their laws into their own hands by targeting Nigerians. But one of the solutions would be for our leaders to get in touch with the Nigerian community they have leaders, the National Association of Nigerians in this country. I think they are doing a wonderful work so that we know how to deal with this new wave of crime. This will be some of my own solutions to the tension that's probably building up. All right, thank you very much, uh, Security Analyst Adams Bona, for showing your own perspectives with us on the subject. You're still watching Media Live here on TV3. You can join us with views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour if you feel strongly about any of our subjects this afternoon. Now, away from uh, this story, a 47-year-old employee of Runel Filling Station at New Dawenya in the Ningo Pram Pram district of the Greater Accra region met his untimely death following an explosion at the filling station to Tuesday morning. The cause of the explosion is yet to be established. Now, the deceased, uh, the deceased Anthony Ahiabu, was said to be cooking in his room at the Renel gas station with a domestic gas cylinder at a time that liquefied petroleum gas was being discharged from a tanker into the main gas reservoir at the station. Well, according to eyewitnesses, the domestic gas cylinder he was using exploded, uh, threw him out of the room onto the compound and caused the main gas reservoir to also explode. A timely intervention by personnel of the Ghana National Fire Service saved the entire gas station, which is also a uh, petrol filling uh, a station attached to it uh, from being bent down on Tuesday dawn. Well, preliminary investigations revealed that the deceased uh, came into contact with naked fire, uh, triggering the explosion. Right, so uh, my colleague Justin Frimpon is live uh, from Duenya and has just joined us with updates on this incident. It's a Black Tuesday for management and workers of Runel Service Oil Service here at Dawenya. An explosion has claimed the life of one of their worker. The bizarre incident is yet to be established by the fire service. But the fire service in Tema have begun investigations into the incident. What actually happened? Well, according to the fire service, their preliminary investigations have proved that uh, the deceased Anthony Ahiabu came directly close to naked fire and a tanker that was discharging fuel at that time. He was apparently in his room and then the valve of the tanker apparently was leaking. So some of the fuel came out. So when he lit the matches while he was cooking at that time, uh, it caught fire. It 
fire service have described the explosion as a bit minor because not the entire filling station got burnt, but portions which serve other fuels like the petrol are still working. So once we got to the scene, we realized that a um, portion of the filling station is operating. But we have eyewitnesses, I have one with me here, who I'll be engaging to tell us exactly what happened this dawn that has claimed the life of Anthony Ahiabu. Well, me pa chow ye frau sayin. E frem Bismarck amo. Bismarck inti dey apotin na hu ye e na hu machin e fa e ja na si wa. Ah, e am say me ye driver junction ho. Ye driver junction ho. Ti ano pa be 630 e na me ba djuma. Ti mba no bi frem say me ko fa kenke e wo ase ho. Ti me ko ame ba me gina me gina junction na me be si kwa no mu. Ana me hu say we kan ba attendant ni ba ko. O cro di me ka cross kwa no. Strange tanka ka ba trotro ba ko bono to oyesa no so even timi zum draw no na me slow down kakra am ka yense ah ada guy o boda man asede no cross kwa ntse de ka bi en twa kwa no ti se ro cross ni e strange mummy timi yense me twa mani ahwe ade ko e sinti a o dress as americano timi me dan no me hu se eja e free baby a free station we am tank no one e ba serious ntese do kon for na me fa o no ma fo ma ko baby am de omo ko no me dey me dey mu twa yes i mean so hazard na eh traffic pass e chika kra dey me so hazard na me see ada ada lane no ana me twa mu e call for service or 25 death track for service am ko ka tem say e je bia ato eh filling station running filling station in tamu ra am so am an twa mu na ase in tempa na am buy ana am be so ano ti dey me hu ano no e ti e ja na e to wa ha no hwa e man kofo akoma tu ye kofo etutu america I'm going to come to you because a B S we're going to be bringing. I have atomic D S here. I'm going to be bringing a we. Until we see this, I know. I'm going to join you. I'm going to come to you. So you heard Bismarck there speaking to me about his account of what he saw when the fire, the explosion actually occurred. Well, he's worried that we have had a couple of explosions like that in the country, and this one, which came very close to the people. The area is, is just close to the main highway, the, the Tema Aplau Highway. So just on the road, you will find the filling station very close. But the exact destruction actually happened at the, where the explosion occurred portion of the other filling station is actually working and work is going on. We tried to speak to management of Bruno Oyo who declined to speak to us on the issue. But since then, the body of Anthony Ahiabu has been deposited at the Tema General Hospital. All right, thank you very much, Justin from Point, reporting live from Dowenya at the Renault filling station, which was raised down by fire this morning. In other news, government has approved a 233 million euro concessional loan facility for the construction of the Tamale Dam on Go Water project. The existing water supply system for Tamale Eight Environs was constructed in 1972 and rehabilitated in 2008, but production is unable to meet the demand um, in the area. Information Minister Kojopon Kuma at his ministry's bi weekly press conference disclosed about 800,000 people are expected to benefit from the project. The number of target beneficiaries, as I mentioned, is about 800,000, and it spans Tamale Metropolis, Yape, and Damongo as well. The scope of works for the project covers the construction of a new water treatment plant with pumps and transmission pipelines pumping station, new district offices at Tamale, and the installation of dedicated power lines to serve this new facility. Additionally, water asset management will be improved through the provision and laying of what they call primary distribution networks, service connection materials, and the training of staff. The project is financed by an export credit facility from a number of institutions led by the Deutsche Bank. Right, you're still watching Media Live here on TV3. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with the views and suggestions as well as comments on any of our top stories this hour. We now bring you our MTN video report. Hello, welcome to the business segment here on Media Live. Now, the World Bank of Economic Data 
to Ghana. Be the fastest growing mobile market in Africa. The reports indicated that global money penetration increased opportunities for expansion of financial services. The role of financial institutions positioned Ghana as the fastest growing mobile money market in Africa. 45 report with focus on financial sector development, financial inclusion indicated. The potential of digital financial services elements further needs financial inclusion in Ghana. Looking at the long of the report, what country director, Mr. Henry Kelly said, Ghana's economy had a turn around over the past two years. He noted significant growth in the number of financial access points over the past five years, primarily related to the spread of all money and government commitment to drive digitization and innovation in payments. He launched the introduction of mobile interoperability. The government has implemented some key steps, such as the establishment of financial access point, the expansion of mobile money, as well as the establishment of mobile money switching between banks and mobile money operators. The report further acknowledged the gap in financial inclusion and offered five recommendations that could enhance financial inclusion in the country. Universal access is a attainable target, particularly with the use of technology. We there for government to take the lead with implementing more of the financial inclusion systems and, in particular, its own strategy on financial inclusion. Dr. Henry Corrali urged commitment to the fiscal responsibility law and commended the Bank of Ghana for efforts taken to clean up the financial sector. In other news, workers of the Ghana bauxite mine at Awaso in the western region went on rampage, burning a pickup truck belonging to the company. The action is to protest the poor working conditions faced by over 600 contract workers. The agitation, TV3 understands, is born out of salary and pay disparities. Information indicates an office building has also been bent down while roads have been blocked with burning vehicles. Just to watch and meet the live here on TV3. We'll take a short, a short commercial break. When we return, we've got the very latest in international news. We've got business and a bigger part, and we've got sports news as well. Hello, good afternoon. It's time to do sports here on Midday Live on TV3. My name is Yao. Ofusulabi. Now, Kwejra Samuel's inclusion into the Black Stars is one that has pleased many fans, but there's a huge debate about where he needs to play for the team. Asamoa has played at left back and also in midfield for the Black Stars, and though many feel his best place is in midfield, Asamoa tells Michael Otiege that helping the team uh, means more to him than where he plays on the pitch. A player that can play so many roles on the field of play, I can be a midfielder, I can support also the attack. I can play as a left uh, back and also left forward. So with me, um, I had um, I spoke with the coach, and I told him like he knows the qualities that I have, and then what I can do for this national team. So we share an idea, and I told him he know perfectly when I come to the national team when I play from midfield, I excel more than playing from the back because. African football is totally different from Europe because Europe, the way we play, um, it depends on how the coach wants us to play. But African football is more physically and, and then um, there's no space. So with me playing from the left back, I will, I will not find it easy. So with what people know and what I know and what everyone knows, like what I can do to help the national team, I'm always good playing when I play from the midfield. So he also accepted and he said, OK, I'll try and play you from the midfield. But in any situation or any case, we need help from the left back. I'm always there. And our former Black Stars player John Pintle says the United team front will play a crucial role in the team's performance at the upcoming Africa Cup of Nations. Now, in an interview with my colleague Julie Bewa, he speaks about maintaining an effective, efficient team, uh, cohesion and discipline. 
capped 89 times for Ghana, the former Fulham player says player discipline and unity will be important if the Black Stars are to come out successful at the AFCON in Egypt. The team needs to come together uh, with determination, hard work, uh, confidence and also teamwork and then respect. And I think um, the coach being there for the players, players being there for the coach, players must play for the coach first before even the nation, national team. Underscoring the importance of motivation, he says the team will have to stay grounded, bond well, be selfless, as well as put in a lot of work. In terms of discipline, discipline means keeping their position right. Those who need to recover should recover. The team shape need to be great not left left wing going left back going and then the other center backs holding the middle if the if the coach asks them to keep the chain they must keep the chain they understand this terms so um, with all this everything will come right with them but if they lose focus if they lose discipline on the field that they can get punished because nowadays all the African countries they are doing well they are pushing their players up and down and on the field of playing each and everyone need to be a, a leader on the field. Ultimately, he is confident a Black Stars with the right team cohesion will be efficient and inch closer to winning the trophy. We have all it takes to win it. If the motivation is there, the players coming together, nothing will stop them. The Black Stars will open the AFCON 2019 campaign on June 25 against Benin. Well, the cranes of Uganda have arrived in Cairo in Egypt uh, on Monday evening for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations tournament. The delegation of over 35 people was warmly welcomed uh, by the Confederation of African Football Protocol team. The 2019 AFCON will be Uganda uh, cranes' seventh time of participation. Uganda kicks off the campaign on Saturday against the Democratic Republic of Congo at the Cairo International Stadium during March Day 2. The other Group A opponents, including uh, Zimbabwe and host Egypt, will begin on the first day. Well, that's all the sports news here on Media Live on TV3. We'll be back with some more sports news later. But international news and entertainment will follow after the break. You're welcome back to Media Life here on TV3. Let's do some international news now. And the U.S. military will send an additional 1,000 troops to the Middle East as tensions build with Iran. Now, Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan said the deployment was in response to what he described as hostile behavior by Iranian forces. The U.S. Navy also shared new images, it says, link Iran to attacks last week on two oil tankers in the Gulf of Oman. Washington has accused Iran of blowing holes in the vessels with mines. Iran has denied their allegations, while tensions were further fueled on Monday when Iran said its stockpile of low and rich uranium would next week exceed levels set under the 2015 nuclear agreement. Meanwhile, on Monday night, three rockets hit a military base housing U.S. troops north of Baghdad. The U.S. said it was indirect fire and did not cause injuries. No group was admitted responsibility for the attack, though it follows warnings by U.S. officials of an increased threat to U.S. interests in Iraq by Iran-backed militias. Up next, we bring you the very latest in entertainment news. Now, the maiden edition of TV3's next top actor reality show has come to an end with Emmanuel Lechu, a.k.a. Ima K, Imagine winner. He walked home with a bragging right, a cash of 10,000 CDs, movie deals and products from sponsors. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ima K! In a period of 10 weeks, Ten promising actors comprising five ladies and five gentlemen were shortlisted to battle it out on who becomes Ghana's next top actor. Five versatile actors were ticked.
grand finale in line with the rules of the show. Fans of finalists thronged TV3's executive theater to cheer them. With a total point of 27.31%, Ima K beat his other contenders to emerge Ghana's next top actor walking home with a total of 10,000 Ghana cities, movie deals and other consolation prizes. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ima K! The love, is, the love is too much. It's, it's a roller coaster of emotions right now. I, I, I give thanks to God for bringing me this far. I give thanks to Ghanaians for believing in me and pushing me to this point for me to emerge as the next top actor. Roller coaster uh, of emotions, indeed. Well, that's how we conclude Midday Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching and for sharing your views with us on social media. My name is Parkus Yasari. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.